Hey, nature photographers. I'm excited to share with you today many of the reasons why I chose to move to the OM system line of cameras. I get asked all the time in the field by other photographers when they see what I'm shooting with, the size of my gear, the quality of my results. So inevitably, questions come up about shooting with the OM system, you know, micro four thirds. There's so many myths. There's so many mistruths I see promulgated time and time again, whether it be on Facebook and social media outlets, on camera review sites. You know, I get really frustrated when I see a lot of these things said over and over again, and they become doctrine to people. And they'll see me in the field. Well, I've had people say, yeah, you know, OM system's fine, but you can't shoot above ISO 800. I shoot at ISO 25,600 all the time, no problems. And the reality is so much is based upon myth and conjecture without really taking the time to visit with someone who's regularly shot with a OM system or to actually do any research of their own. So today's video, I'm going to walk you through many of the reasons why I shoot with the Micro Four Thirds system known as OM system. Hey, nature photographers, I'm Lee Hoy, OM System Ambassador, Photography Workshop Instructor for Wildside Nature Tours and Precision Camera and Video, and Contributing Author for the Journal of Wildlife Photography. Here we go. Well, as you know, I'm very much proud to be an OM System Ambassador. I've been an OM System Ambassador since 2019. I've been shooting their gear since 2018. Prior to that, I shot Canon for over 25 years. And while I was getting great results with Canon, I realized that they at the time were falling way behind in the mirrorless camera um, development. And I saw this coming. I saw the change coming. You know, I had a big Canon 600 version 2 lens, and I was afraid that eventually those would get to where they had almost no value. So I was doing research into which system I wanted to choose. So not only did I keep considering Canon, but I also purchased some Sony mirrorless bodies. I purchased Sigma art lenses, some Sony lenses, I and I shot, and I had OM system bodies uh, and uh, lenses. In fact, at one time, I was shooting a lightning storm in Big Bend with OM system with a uh, Mark III on one tripod with an uh, EM-1 Mark III. I was shooting a Sony A7 IV on one tripod, and I was shooting a Canon uh, Mark IV at the time, 5D Mark IV, all on a tripod using remotes capturing the same lightning bolt. So I tested all gear. So when people say, well, yeah, but you're an OM system ambassador, let me be clear, much of my equipment I purchased prior to becoming an OM system ambassador, where I no longer an OM system ambassador, I would continue to shoot this for the reasons that you're going to see in this video. So I did a lot of research. I'm skeptical by nature. I do not rely on camera review websites because many of those people get sent gear. They might use it one week. And I'm going to be honest, you cannot review camera gear that's as, that's as intricate as a mirrorless camera playing with it for a week. You can do first impressions, but you cannot do a thorough review. I feel like I need to use gear three to six months before I can really give you an honest review of a camera body. A lens, yeah, it might not take that long. A remote, sure, I don't need six months. But a camera body, there are so many features packed into some of today's cameras. You really need to find yourself in a variety of conditions, situations, and an and experiment to find out what's really going to work well for you. But here are the reasons why ultimately I made the decision to go hardcore with OM system, selling all of my Canon, all of the Sony gear, even the Sigma art lenses. Those are the last lenses I sold. I really like those, but many of my friends are shooting with those now. So let me walk you through the reasons why I ultimately made the move to the OM system. First, I used to do tours in Big Bend for the Kalima Warbler. It was a minimum of a 10-mile hike. A few times I would hike with the tripod with the big giant 600 millimeter up that mountain and back down, and that got old. And it was very hard to get great shots of a Kalima Warbler using a big tripod with a long lens. And when I saw the size of the Micro Four Thirds system, I was very intrigued. So to give you an idea, uh, if I would occasionally, you know, put the 1.4 teleconverter on the Canon 600, you know, I could be shooting at 840 millimeters, lugging a lot of weight. Well, this right here is my OM system camera now, the OM-1 with a vertical grip added and the M Zuko 150 to 400 4.5 with the built-in 1.25 teleconverter. Just flip that switch. I'm now basically shooting at a 35 millimeter equivalent of 1,000 millimeters f5.6. 
Now let's try to get to that focal length in Canon. Do you know how much money you're going to spend? We'll talk about that in a minute. Plus, you're not going to shoot a thousand millimeters handheld for most Canon bodies for very long. All right. And you're, you're going to find the weight on almost every other camera, even the lighter mirrorless Nikon, Sony Canon. They aren't getting this light. And they're also not getting a lot of the other features that you're going to get with the OM system. So this is my primary wildlife setup right here. Okay. So the lightweight feature was one of the main things that attracted me. I remember going to a birding festival in Florida and having to spend almost $200 extra shipping big Canon lenses. Now, I often put two or three camera bodies and up to seven, eight lenses in one Think Tank Airport Roller Derby 2. Okay, so now it all goes with me. It goes up above my head. It's always safe. It's always with me. I'm not paying extra baggage fees. So the lightweight feature alone makes it more than worth moving to the system. Most of my clients are older than me, and I see them time and time again struggling, even some that are in their 40s and 50s. You know, I can handhold my gear in a boat for a long time. Yeah, you might handhold some of the bigger gear for a little bit, but you know what? You're going to get tired a lot faster than I am. And so when I'm in a situation like a Bosque del Apache the other day, where we just had bird after bird after bird coming in, you know, for probably over an hour straight, I had snow geese just flying and landing in front of me, shooting continuously uh, throughout that. No problem shooting handheld. So the lightweight feature makes it much better for landscape macro. You know, I don't put a vertical grip on my macro and landscape body because it makes it so lightweight that even with a flash, and a diffuser, I can hand hold this with one hand, vertical, horizontal. If I need to hold a branch still, if I want to hold a reflector, if I want to hold another flash, whatever I want to do, I can make adjustments to my camera gear. I can focus back button. I can reach many of my buttons and dials with one hand and shoot vertical. And I don't even have the added weight, although it's not much, of a built-in vertical grip. Again, allowing me to capture a lot of images that just frankly I wouldn't even have tried with heavier gear. Okay, so that's factor number one, the lightweight. Factor number two is the host of special features that are found on the OM system camera bodies. Many of these other cameras do not even offer. Some have eventually got there, and I'll have clients come up and say, oh, well, my Nikon does this, and I'll be like, yeah, that's awesome. I've had that for like five or six years. That's the reality of how long some of this better technology has been in our cameras. So, for example, you know, AI subject detection, I'll talk about autofocus a little bit. It's amazing. We have bird detection mammal detection, and then for people that aren't nature photographers, there's trains, planes, you know, automobiles, things that I'm not interested in. But the, the OM-1 has AI subject detection, but let's talk about what we call computational features, okay? That is like a built-in live neutral density filter. Uh, ND64, so that's up to six stops of light built in. So with the press of a button, when I put it in C1 on this camera, which is my landscape um, programming, I just press a button and suddenly I can change from a, a, a you know one stop to a six stop neutral density filter right away. And that lets me shoot waterfalls without having to screw on a filter. Now, if I wanna use other computational features and I need a neutral density filter, I might need to screw one on. No problem. I always carry one with me anyways. But most of the time, just shooting straightforward stuff, I use the built-in neutral density filter. We also have a high-res mode. Handheld, you can do a 50 megapixel image, put it on a tripod, up to 80 megapixel image. And, that, and so you got both those features. We have focus bracketing, focus stacking. You can do focus stacking in camera or you can do focus bracketing and stack images yourself. That's what I choose to do. There's live composite. That's where the, the camera will take the same exposure setting over and over again, only recording brighter pixels. So for lightning, for fireworks, everything, you get a raw file that's already got all this, all this data in there. Rather than having to stack images, you have one exposure with multiple lightning boats and no having to stack or, or, or use a lightning trigger just makes that so much easier. So the, the computational features in this camera alone help it stand apart from most other camera systems, okay? So let's talk about factor number three, price versus other brands. Well, I've had clients, you know, shooting a Sony A1, and they're going to spend 6500 I think 7000 or more on that body. 
that body doesn't have a lot of the features this does. Like, for example, a built-in autofocus limiter. I can program exact distances for my focus. If I'm sitting at a blind and the perches are, you know, 20 feet away, I could say, I only want you to focus from 18 feet to 22 feet built in. Uh, that's, you're not going to find that on the Sony A1. Okay. So you can buy this camera body, a grip, extra batteries, and some of our best quality lenses cheaper than one Sony body. Now, well, Lee, the Sony body's better. I guarantee you I'll go take pictures with the Sony body and this body and post them, and you would never pick out the difference. 100% promise you couldn't tell the difference. No way you would pick it out, okay? So, you know, let's say I took 10 images. Five of them were from each camera. You would never get five and five. 100% promise you. So you have to ask yourself, why am I spending so much more money? Why am I doing it? Is it just for the name? Well, it's it's a full frame. Yeah, I know you want to crop the crap out of your images. We don't have to crop our images because our focal lengths are longer. So rarely do we need to crop our images. It's not that frequent. We get closer to stuff. Our gear's lighter. We can carry it more. It just, we don't need 45 megapixels to crop back down to 20 where we start. Sorry, but that's, that's just part of the truth of it, right? So why do you want to go spend money needlessly when you could use that money on photo workshops or trips this is one of the best lenses by far i've ever owned this is at 150 to 400 this retail is about 7500 dollars to try with canon to get to this focal length to get up to a thousand millimeters you're going to spend about twenty two thousand dollars let me say that again to try to get to this focal length you're going to spend close to twenty two thousand dollars so seventy five hundred a lot lighter, phenomenally fast, incredible quality. I mean, uh, what was Olympus now home system has always been known for incredible lens quality. So, you know, that's just kind of silly to go spend that kind of money when you don't have to, okay? Now, let's talk about factor number four. That is the weatherproof nature of our gear. Now, not all lenses qualify, okay? But like the new OM-1 is IP53. So, I've been in situations when I was testing Sony and OM system at the same time. I went to Great Sand Dunes National Park in Colorado. The wind was whipping. It was just probably 30 to 40 miles per hour. So needless to say, in those sand dunes, sand is blowing like crazy. So I had a Sony with a wide-angle lens on one side of my Black Rapid dual strap. I had an, an, an Olympus body at the time with a, with a lens on this side with other Olympus lenses I was going to swap out. I walked about, a, I hiked about a mile out into the dunes. By the time I got into the dunes, there was so much sand inside my Sony body, I couldn't even take a picture. The, the sensor had dust spots all over it. I changed lenses with the OM system, no problem. Never had an issue with sand in the body. To clean them, I will often take my water bottle and pour it over my camera gear, hold it under the sink. I've rinsed it off in a shower in the Galapagos when I get sand all over it. You are not going to do that with any other gear. I mean, you might try, but you're probably going to be, you're not going to hold it under a shower sink, okay? So to clean this off, much easier. I don't have to worry about the elements. I, when I'm shooting in Yellowstone in the, sn in the snow, I can set a camera down in the snow, pick it right back up, you know, make sure there's no snow in the lens and keep shooting. Uh, I, say, I have other people tell me they'll do that with their gear. I really want to watch them do it a lot and have water melt around the, the lens mount and tell me they feel comfortable doing it, okay? I really, you're, you're not getting that same level of protection as you get on this. So, um, again, I've only had to clean my sensor once with an OM system camera. And it's because as I was trading lenses, I was talking to a client, not paying attention. And when I took the lens off, I'm talking, and I held the camera out from me, and I saw a little piece of spittle fly out of my mouth, boom, right onto the sensor. Yeah, that was the one time I really needed to clean my sensor. So, you know, the, the weatherproofness is uh, factor number four on why I moved to OM system. Factor number five has to do with the autofocus. The OM1 body has 1,053 all cross quad pixel autofocus points. So back in the day, we loved having that one quad pixel in the center of our cameras, and we would be ecstatic. We had a hundred and something autofocus points. Well, this now has 1,053 autofocus points in it. That's absurd. That's a lot of autofocus points. So our accuracy, any 
any given autofocus point is as accurate as any other. And that's a beauty. This camera detects birds and picks them up extremely quickly. It will focus on a lot of situations that are very challenging. And if you're having trouble with it, odds are you're really not understanding how autofocus works, what are the best autofocus point configurations for different settings. But I've been ecstatic with the accuracy of this body. Another reason, so the autofocus would be factor number five. Factor number six is going to be that I can shoot up to 120 frames per second in RAW. Now, my personal favorite drive mode for wildlife photography is known as SH2. That gives me 50 frames per second RAW and continuous autofocus. If I go to 120, my, my focus is locked at the first picture. So for wildlife, I'm generally not using that. So 50 frames per second, and that's up to ISO 12,800. When I'm shooting above ISO 12,8, I will go to uh, sequential high, silent, which is 20 frames, up to 20 frames per second, and uh, that's raw and continuous autofocus. So just the, you know, occasionally when I need to be above ISO 12.8, then I change my drive mode to that. There's also Pro Capture. And I think one of their camera systems finally come up with something similar, somewhat similar, but it still doesn't work as well as this. Pro Capture, I have pressed the shutter button and the camera takes pictures, putting it in a buffer, not on the card. When I see happen what I want to capture on film, like in the Galapagos when the um, when the marine iguanas are expelling the excess salt, you know, I'll, I'll pick one, focus, half press the shutter button, and it's taking pictures. But you know, they may not have expelled the salt yet. So I'm watching, watching. Well, when I see that happen, I will fully press the shutter button and it will record however many images prior that I've told the camera. I believe it's up to 25. I usually found like 10 works just fine for like the salt being expelled from their nose. And then however long I hold the button down, it'll take it at 50 frames per second. Usually for most action, it's it does not require you to hold it down very long. Okay. Now here's some people say, well, yeah, but I don't know if I want to capture that many images. Uh, so what you're saying is you don't want to capture some incredibly special moments. Kind of silly. I mean, we want to take advantage of, of uh, with wildlife photography, high frame uh, rates is extremely advantageous for capturing more choices on wing position for birds in flight, more action when predators are chasing prey. You know, and sometimes if you lose focus, it's giving you more choices to reacquire focus. So Faster drive modes are always better in most situations. There are times we're not, but in, for wildlife photography, for sure. So that's factor number six on my drive modes. And factor number seven is going to be lens quality, right? I really appreciate the variety and the quality of lenses. Like the new 90 millimeter macro f3.5, this thing is stunning. The image quality, you know, the, the prior macro lens I used a lot was the 60 millimeter macro, and it wasn't even a pro lens. It was so good the first time I tested it, I looked at the back of my camera and I thought, something, this is unbelievable. I threw the, some images in Lightroom real quick that same day, posted them on Facebook that day, and several Europeans contacted me and said they were going to buy that body and lens that day because they love macro and they knew how advantageous it would be. You know, this is the 90, which is a fairly good size lens for OM system. The 60 millimeter is a tiny little thing. But for venomous snakes, frogs, other insects that you might spook, the 90 is going to give me a little more working room. My favorite landscape lens is the 8 to 25 f4. I really enjoy this lens. It takes screw-on filters. Prior to this, the 7 to 14 2.8 was probably my favorite um, focal length for landscape, but it's got the bulbous end, so it won't take screw-on filters. Phenomenal night sky lens, still a great landscape lens. I like to shoot into the sun for landscapes a lot. This does handle lens flare a little bit better since it doesn't have the bulbous end. Both of them are extremely high quality lenses. I have the eight millimeter 1.8 fisheye for night sky and landscapes. 12 to 40, I use those for video. I use them for camera trapping. 12 2.0, there's another nice night sky lens, right? So lots of variety, a huge offering. The 40 to 150 2.8. Uh, I used to, I have two of the 300 F4s. I broke one in the Galapagos, right? And I had the 40 to 150, 
which is basically a 160 to 300 2.8, and I put a doubler on it, and I didn't miss a single shot in the Galapagos, despite the fact that I broke my longer lens. So, you know, if I go to Africa, I'm definitely taking the 40 to 150. Yellowstone in winter, definitely taking the 40 to 150. Galapagos, the 12 to 100, which is a 24 to 200, is perfect because so much of the wildlife is right there in your face. You know, you've got lots of variety of lenses, having a good sampling. But if you ask me my basic kit, I'm taking H25 F4. I'm going to take either a macro lens, one, you know, depending on where I'm going, if I'm going to Ecuador or if I'm going to, um, you know, if I'm going to Costa Rica, South Texas, definitely taking a macro lens. Yellowstone in winter, not going to be a lot of bugs or macro elements there, right? So uh, if I'm going to someplace like Yellowstone in winter, instead of the macro, it's going to be the 40 to 150 f2.8 they also have an f4 that's a little cheaper still a very high quality lens and then obviously the 150 to 400 it goes with me on every trip unless it's a straight landscape photography trip so i could boil my kit down to three lenses and almost cover everything from eight millimeter aka 16 millimeter all the way out to a thousand that's not a bad deal so those are some of the reasons i've made the switch to om system Time and time again, our clients come back home from a workshop and switch to OM system because they saw us being able to handheld at ridiculously low speeds. You know, I've handheld this so far at one fourth of a second. Now, the bird wasn't moving and there was no wind, but a fourth of a second at a thousand millimeters getting a tack sharp shot. That's pretty hard to beat. Of course, you're not going to do that a lot, but I was trying to see how low I could get. I got pretty close at a half a second at 1,000 millimeters. Most people would have been happy, but it wasn't It wasn't really sharp enough for my eyes uh, for what I really like. So I would really recommend that you find reasons why to make the shift. You can always find reasons why not. And of course, I understand if you got a lot of money invested in other gear, that can be a challenging factor. But if you look at selling your gear and the price of OM system, you're saving a lot of money and getting every bit the same level of quality. You're getting more special features, okay? And, and you're, you're going to be able to take more shots because of your mobility and the weatherproofing. I was teaching a, a workshop in Florida at a festival, and it started raining, and everybody else had to run inside. I kept shooting. I love shooting in the rain. So I think all these, all these, you know, factors made it a no-brainer for me to make the the switch. Yes, I am an OM system ambassador. I made the switch before I became one. I bought much of my gear before I became one. And frankly, the gear just keeps getting better and better and better, making me even happier that I've made the switch. What I'd like to know from you down in the comments below is, have you considered switching to OM? If not, why not? If so, what are some questions you have? Also, I've got some affiliate links down below for camera gear for lenses. Let me tell you what I do. If you buy you know, a, a body and some lenses from me. I give you at least one free online class for an hour to set up your camera. So if you buy a body and a lens, and if you buy more, I may give you even more time depending on how much you buy. So if you purchase through my affiliate links, please let me know. Send me an email. You know, send me a uh, message through Facebook, Instagram. You know, hop on there. Let me know, and we'll arrange for you to get that free class. I hope this has been helpful. I hope to see you out in the field with an OM system gear over your shoulder. Have a good day and good shooting.